it's time to go over the Ryzen 1400 and 1500X reviews. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Gamer Melt. I'm going to be all over the place with benchmarks like the 1600X review, and all the benchmarks will be coming from the 1500X because AMD only sent out the 1500X and 1600X in review kits. But keep in mind that the 1400 should be capable of manual overclocking pretty close to the 1500X's overclock performance. So they should be relatively close in what they have to offer. I'll also have affiliate links to both of these in the description. So if you'd like to make a purchase, it doesn't cost any more, but definitely helps me out if you use those links. Either way, let's get right into it. This time around, the most comparable chip on Intel's side price to performance to the 1400 and 1500X is the i5-7400. These chips are quite different though, with both the 1400 and 1500X being 4-core 8-thread CPUs while the i5 is only a 4-core processor. The i5 can't be overclocked because the multiplier is locked, but it can turbo to 3.5 GHz. Both the 1400 and 1500X do have overclocking capability, but if you simply allow them to boost with enough cooling, the 1500X goes to 3.7 GHz and the 1400 moves up to 3.4. Like before, I'll start with a few synthetics and professional workload benchmarks before getting into games. Starting things off, the only thing that sucks is that almost no one actually compared it to a similarly priced Intel equivalent, and not many do a ton of overclocking comparison, but I'll try my best to mention what is and isn't good, price to performance, etc. Also keep in mind that I won't be showing all the benchmarks for the reviewers, so if you want to see all their benchmarks, definitely check them out. I'll have all of those linked in the description. Starting things off is the infamous Cinebench, with both multi and single core performance. You can see they only get as low as the i5-7500, which is more than even the 1500X in price, yet the 1500X beat out the 7500 in both single and multi-core performance. It also goes as far as beating out the 7600K in multi-core, though I will say that's without either of them overclocked. Really, Cinnabon shows performance right what you expect, given the specs of each chip. Next up is some actual real-world performance, with compression and decompression showing the 1500X beating out both the 7600K and 7500 quite handily. This is the case with other reviewers' benchmarks as well. Really, you see this in most every multi-core professional workload, with a couple strange exceptions. Handbrake had the 1500X beating the 7500 in H.264 encoding, but for some reason, losing in H.265. The only other thing that I saw is Adobe Premiere Pro, where it easily beats out the 7500, but pretty much ties the 7600K. Don't get me wrong here though, the 7600K is $240, and the fact that the 1500X can beat it at anything, much less it being strange that it didn't fully beat it, is just incredible. So this of course brings us to games, and this is a pretty great time for Ryzen and price to performance. With even not being highly optimized, Ryzen is able to hold its own pretty well. It beats out the 7500 in Hitman, Ties in Deus Ex, and Mafia 3. Although it does lose in a couple titles, like for example Warhammer, even with the 1500X overclocked, it doesn't do that great in average FPS. But here's the thing. Minimum FPS is pretty similar, and actually Gamers Nexus noted that the 7500 had much worse minimums before an update. The last one I want to show is extremely telling, though it's only in one game so I don't want to make a huge thing about it. But it does seem there is something to those who claim Ryzen gives smoother gameplay. Metro Last Light has 0.1% lows of an overclocked 6600K. Guys, this is the 6600K, we're talking a good bit more expensive. Its 0.1% lows were 33 FPS, while the 7500 was as low as 28. These are both cards running an average of over 100 frames per second. That's a massive dip. The overclocked and stock 1500X might not have the higher average, sure, though of course it's still over 100. Its 0.1% minimums are in the 60s. That's double the lows of even the much more expensive 6600K. Once again though, that's a very strange case and it may not be perceptible in playing, I'm just not sure. It's also not necessarily fair to say that when Ryzen does have a few games it does really weirdly pour in, but devs should have had enough time to optimize for Intel by now. Of course with Warhammer they saw a way to do it, but I don't know, it just seems like the i5 is really being given all it can. But I don't know, it could just be chalked up to poor optimization. So what does all this mean for you? 
really, once again, if you do professional workloads, just just get Ryzen. Seriously, there's really no reason not to. There's I think there's like one or two things that Ryzen randomly doesn't do all that great in. And it just has to do with higher clocks being the biggest differentiator, but the 1500X and 1400 actually have very decent clocks. I mean, there's really no reason not to get those for professional workloads. I also don't think that games fully utilize the SMT of Ryzen, as they should be better than they are comparatively, but it's tough to say for sure. I think there's definitely optimization to be had, but it's certainly not easy to say whether that will happen or not. As it is, there's a chance Ryzen can provide a smoother experience overall, but I think we need to see more games showing these dips to be sure. It's just not enough to say right now. With that said, as long as the 1400 can do what the 1600 and 1700 can, it's almost certainly the best bang for your buck when it comes to processing at this price point. Even when we're talking gaming, with the 1500X mostly tying and sometimes losing to the 7500, it does lose more than it beats it, you may prefer it for $10 more, but it's tough to say with that strange minimum, and in the past we've seen it utilize far less for the CPU than the i5, which means Ryzen gives you more breathing room for things like streaming, though who knows what will happen with Windows' upcoming gaming mode. Still, it certainly seems games are completely utilizing what the i5's got, while the Ryzen 5 chips have more to spare. So before I go, don't forget the giveaway. Just follow the link in the description and subscribe. Also, if you want to pick up either of these chips, don't forget about that affiliate link also in the description. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.